What's up, everybody? Axe Wizard here. It's uh, I've been I've been looking through a lot of the different Cairn adventures, and I decided I was gonna write my own, and that's been a fun adventure in itself. So again, I just I love this system. I think it's great. So I'm actually working on an adventure that I'm going to run for one of my buddies this weekend. I'm writing the adventure to be a good introduction to the Cairn system, and also for people who are just new to role-playing games, so like uh, new to tabletop RPGs. So let's just jump into what I've got. The adventure I've got so far is just, it's called Guards, and the reason why it's called Guards is because you think of the TV show Cops, Guards. <laughs> uh, I just remember like I was watching Shrek 2 with my son a while ago and uh, there's that scene where it was like you know Jinji's watching TV and it's like tonight on nights and it shows like it's basically just a, a medieval a adaptation of, of the show cops I thought that'd be a really cool like role play adventure so I'm making it um, it's gonna be called guards at least for now that's the uh, working title I might name it something cooler but this is what I got I just drew, I, I just made up some uh, some guard looking guy on Hero Forge, and then I just threw like an art filter over it to make it look like he's drawn or whatever. So let's get into the adventure. So I'm gonna walk you through the starting instructions and then the introduction, and then I think we might, I might show you the first encounter, and then I'll just leave the rest of it a secret. So before we jump into this, uh, adventure i had some concerns while like as i was writing it that i feel like it might be a bit too railroady i think for a introductory an introductory adventure into the cairn system i think that might be advantageous and if you wanted to uh start your own like campaign from this you could easily just say that your players you know leave and find their own way <laughs> they don't have to be guards so uh but maybe they got started as guards so let's jump into it so for setting wise the adventure is going to take place in the city of imgen uh and depending on what missions and stuff you guys might get how far you might make it and you might also end up going to the surrounding remote villages of clerg and onstead players are going to play the role of city guards in the city of imgen and they will face various encounters and scenarios this adventure has been written with the intent of using theater of the mind so it's not going to include any battle maps however stat blocks will be included so a lot of these encounters aren't really like super intense uh they're gonna some some of them are going to be intense as far as like role playing wise. <laughs> uh, I've got some fun encounters in here that will really challenge players and give player and there's no cut and dried solution to every one of these encounters. So for starting instructions, when you're making your character, uh, if you if you are the uh, warden, you're gonna want to guide your players to making through through the standard uh, Cairn character creation. Um, the only difference is is that when it comes time to roll for starting gear, you don't want to roll for armor, helmets and shields, or weapons. Uh, those are going to be issued to you. So you're going to start with a brigandine armor, which is bulky, gives you one armor, that takes up two inventory slots, and you're just going to start with a standard sword. So that is issued to you by the city of Imgen as part of being a guard. If the players want to use their starting funds to purchase additional gear, by all means have them them do that, but they're just gonna start with the standard issued uh, equipment there. Everything else uh, they can roll for. So, you know, when they're making their name and background, they can do that. For character traits, the only uh, trait that they're gonna ignore is number six, clothing. So it says here, with the only exceptions being, don't, do not have them roll for the clothing trait or for armor, helmets and shields or weapons. And those correspond with the actual sections in the uh, book. So everything else they can roll for, they can roll for their expeditionary gear, their tools, trinkets, and bonus item. By all means, have them roll for that. If they if they end up getting a spell book, that'll make it really interesting. I'll just say that. <laughs> but yeah, that that's the intent. But players, of course, can make their own characters. They don't they don't have to roll and stick to those tables. They can use those. They can just pick out the ones they want for the for the characters they wish to play. But if you just want to go through quick and easy, uh, I I highly encourage to use the randomized tables because I think it makes it a lot more fun. Um, if there is only one player, 
the warden is encouraged to roll an NPC to be the player's partner. Because when you're playing the role of a guard, like you're, you're never going to see a guard by themselves. Like they're, they're typically in pairs. Um, sometimes they're even in, in bigger teams. So ideally this, this adventure would be run for two to six players. But if you're running it for a single player, just have just a uh, roll an NPC to be the player's partner. Um, they will have the same issued equipment, just the brigandine and sword. Uh, the warden should probably, probably play the uh, character. The NPC will follow the player's lead. However, the warden can use the NPC to warn the player of danger or suggest ideas for how to handle situations should the player struggle. And then finally, in the adventure, any text written in italics are intended to be read aloud to the player. I don't know if, if I'm going to keep it this way. I think I might just use a different font and maybe add like some additional styling for text that's supposed to be meant to be read aloud. So let's jump into the intro. So once your players have rolled their characters and they're satisfied with their starting equipment, then we can begin. So this, uh, I'm just going to go through, I'm going to read the entire intro to you. Our story begins with you anxiously awaiting outside the office of Guard Captain Geberich. You each are standing at attention, facing the stout oak door, awaiting to officially report for duty as new city guards of Imgen. Lieutenant Vandal is giving you instructions in an uninterested tone, as though he was bored. The great city of Eimgen appreciates your initiative and valor for joining the city guard. Captain Geberich will take your oath officially and swear you in, and give you your initial briefing momentarily. You may stand at ease until that door opens. Before you can even relax your stance, the door swings open outward from the room, and in the door stands a man of medium height and athletic build. What little hair he has left is flecked with gray, and his weathered skin creases in a smile as he addresses you in a gravelly voice. Look at you, standing at attention. Outstanding discipline. We're going to get along great, I can already tell. Come in, come in. He stands aside and gestures for you to enter. As you enter, you see a line drawn on the floor in front of his desk. You instinctively toe the line and stand once more at attention. You hear the thud of the heavy door closing behind you and the footsteps of the man as he walks around to his desk, eyeing you as he rests his hands on his chair, facing you. He speaks. Good, good. Already kitted out. Didn't even have to be told to toe the line. Excellent. Be at ease. Relax. He takes his seat as you relax your stance, shrugging off the stiffness of standing inert for so long. I am Captain Geberich, as you're probably already aware, and today... You become official protectors of the city of Imgen. Before I take your oaths, do you have any questions of me? Now, at this point, the warden uh, gives the players opportunity to speak if they have any questions. Uh, Geberich is a seasoned soldier who appreciates questions and will answer as best as he can, but he will not take kindly to jokes or, or nonsense. So, um, once any questions have been answered, you can continue reading this uh giant monologue I've got here. <laughs> are you ready to take the protector's oath? Gibrick asked nonchalantly. However, his eyes are shrewdly observing your reactions, waiting for any hesitation. Seeing none as you all voice, yes, captain, brings a smile to his face. Excellent, he exclaims, beaming at you as he stands proudly and begins to unravel a well-worn parchment. You instinctively snap to the position of attention. So here, Geberic is about to recite the, the oath, and the players should repeat after him. Uh, feel free to break it down into three to five word bursts if it's, if it's easier on the memory, if needed. Repeat after me, commands Geberic in a well-practiced ceremonial voice. I pledge my strength and valor to safeguard the people of this city. If the players do not repeat the uh, first line of the oath, then Captain Geberich just looks at them pointedly and uh, repeats it again with a hard stare. And then from there, they should start repeating it. And then, and then we'll just go through the, the, the whole oath here. I shall uphold justice, protect the weak, and maintain order. I vow to stand as a shield against threats, both within and beyond our walls. I will not waver in the face of danger, nor falter in my duty. I embrace this responsibility as a protector of the people, and I will serve with honor and integrity. This, I swear. So after the players have repeated that, then it goes on. Captain Geberich allows the parchment to roll itself back up as he places it back on his desk. Remember your oaths and do your best. These are troubled times and you are needed now more than ever. This is not a job for the weak. 
Not many would volunteer to do what you do. Hold your heads high and proud, and bring honor to this uniform. Gebrick slowly exhales as he walks around to the front of his desk. Relax, relax. Now let me brief you on your duties. He lounges on the side of his desk, crossing his arms, leaning in as he speaks in an unexpectedly soft voice. I'll be honest, it's a dangerous job. Now, more so than ever. There's a very real chance you may fall in the line of duty, but that is what we do. You will be assigned as a team. You'll work together, and I advise you all stick together. A lone god is a dead god. Look out for each other, and keep everyone safe. He sighs as he straightens slightly, his voice returning back to his normal gruff, gravelly tone. Shifts will be rotating periodically. For now, this is more of like a, a booming voice, but whatever. <laughs> I'm not that good at acting. Get off my back. Shifts will be rotating periodically. For now, you'll be on duty from nightfall to dawn. Normally, I'd assign you daylight hours and place a senior guard with you to guide you until you feel more confident, but we're already undermanned as it is. He looks at each of you and grins. On a good note, though, if you make it through your first shift unharmed, you'll have some serious bragging rights in the barracks. He laughs as he stands up and walks around uh, walks around you to the door. Rest up. Your first shift is tonight. You'll be shown to your quarters, and you'll find your assignment posted on the board outside your door. Don't be late. I'll let you get to your preparations, and I know you'll make me proud. He opens the door and waves you out of his office where you are met once more again by, uh, I guess that's kind of redundant, once more, uh, or uh, once again, I'm reading wrong, that's my bad, <laughs> where, you are, where you are met once again by Lieutenant Vandal. I'll show you to your quarters, expect to have your assignment posted on your assignment board before your watch begins. In the event there is no assignment posted, you are to come see me directly. Vandal leads you through the barracks to your assigned quarters. As you pass through the halls, you can see your fellow guardsmen attending to various tasks while they are off duty. Some are caring for their arms and armor, some are dressing wounds, some are fast asleep. Others are playing various games involving dice or cards. Some of them glance up and meet your gaze as you pass. Some smile, some nod, some ignore you and go back to what they are doing. One thing you notice from all of them though is that they are all tired and sporting various scars. You wonder just what exactly you signed up for, but your thoughts are in interrupted as Vandal halts before a rough wooden door with a small posting board just to the left uh, of the doorway. Here are your quarters. As the captain already advised you, you are a single unit, a team. Inside, you'll find your cots with clean linens ready for use. You are expected to maintain your quarters just as you will your arms and armor. Should you have any questions, see Barrack Sergeant Gellimer. I'd advise getting some rest before your first assignment. And with that, he brusquely walks to the walks back the way he came, leaving you to your quarters. Now, after that lengthy intro, the players are basically left up to their own devices. So they have the remainder of the entire day to do whatever they want before their first shift. So they could simply get some rest before shift. If they want to, you know, go back to the marketplace and try to get other uh, equipment that they forgot during character creation, they can do that. Uh, it's, it's also a great time to get to know one another. So if the, if the players really want to do role play, um, they can spend time, you know, talking to each other, going through each other's backgrounds and kind of just, you know, getting to know one another. Um, and then when it comes time for their first uh, assignment, um, so I, I have a note here that says, even though they were advised to rest, players should not be fatigued or deprived for their first watch, even if they chose not to rest. So even if they spend the entire day horse playing around, having fun, hoo ha and all that fun stuff, um, e e even if they don't rest, they're not going to go into their first uh, their first patrol uh, fatigued or uh, deprived. So then it gets into their first patrol, the market district. So uh, this is the first uh, encounter of this. And uh, this is where I was saying it kind of gets railroady. So, you know, after after this whole intro here, where you go through and you swear your your, your oath and, you know, you are so you're shown to your barracks, uh, like being a guard is a very structured um Syst uh, systematic like way of life so for typical adventure adventurers <laughs> um they're more used to just doing whatever they want well this is like this is where i this is where i was saying it feels more railroady because you're kind of locked in like you're you're a guard you have assignments you go and do shifts 
this is what you do. So this is why I think it's 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 a good adventure to start out to learn the system because the player is already kind of told like what to do and they're just kind of doing what they have to do, but then they still have to exercise their own uh, decisions as you'll soon find out when we go through this uh, first patrol here. <laughs> it, it eases them into like learning how to like role play and make decisions and also learn the system as well, which is, it, it's a pretty lightweight system. So I think it should be uh fairly painless some people might not like the the big long thing i, I know some people might not be comfortable with the whole oath thing that, that at the start and as the warden um you know if the if the players aren't comfortable with it then you know you guys can just say i just you guys repeat the the oath and then you guys move on so i might i might add some more text in there to make that a more obvious for the warden but yeah, this is my first adventure I've ever written for like a tabletop RPG, so I have no idea what I'm doing. But I think I'm doing okay. So, the first patrol. So, players will be patrolling around the markets during the night. Um, all the shops will be closed, and there will be almost nobody on the streets at this time. So, keep in mind that eyesight will be poor, and at least one player should be holding a torch if they are to see anything at all. Now, a torch is part of the, starting, uh, the standard starting equipment when you roll your, your character. So they should have at least one torch, <laughs> unless they sold it for something. I I don't know. So they have to have a torch. Like one player must be holding a torch. I would say like the torch will just last the the entire shift, even though it's probably not realistic. Just go with it. It's fine. So this is a, this is meant to be read aloud to the players. As you are readying yourselves for the coming patrol, you hear the sound of a hammer driving a nail into the assignment board outside your quarters. You crowd around your assignment board, reading the few short words scribbled on a parchment. Market District. It's not much to go off of, but you know what you're supposed to do. Oaths fresh in your minds. You set out together to the Market District to start your, your patrol. So for the encounters, because players can do so many things, there's not really much... Um, much steps involved to it so what i do is i typically in include like a quick paragraph here of like what's supposed to happen and then the warden will facilitate all of that and then make all that happen so uh for the like the first time wardens who might not be good at improv and stuff like that i i give you what the scenario is and then you fill in the blanks and then make it happen or even change it entirely to to suit your own needs so players will most likely be on alert so make sure to inform them of any sounds that, or, or sights they, they might hear or see. Have them investigate a, a few things that turn out to be harmless. So, for example, like a stray animal. So, you know, during your patrol, you uh, are going through the market district, keeping your eyes and ears peeled, and you hear a sound off to your left, and you see slight movement. What do you do? Have the players like go through and like eh, investigate it. Maybe it might turn out to be a stray animal. Um, they could also encounter like a tired shopkeeper that's that's leaving late, and maybe they might uh, accost them or accidentally arrest them, thinking they are a burglar. There's a chance that th that could happen too. Even something uh, so benign as a baker arriving before dawn to get started early. <laughs> that's something that could also happen, or anything else you might want to add in. So one of the things they should investigate before the night is over is a burglary in progress. So this is the main encounter for the first patrol. Players can be alerted by a sound or furtive movement. As they investigate, the burglar will try to hide or flee. If confronted, the burglar will try to lie. If all else fails, the burglar will fight just enough to try to break free and run. If the players catch and restrain the burglar, he will give up and allow himself to be arrested. So here, uh, so those are the, the, the basic things. I, I, I don't know if maybe I should break those out into, into easy to see bullet points or if I should just keep it as a paragraph. I think I might break it out into bullet points. It might be easier to, to read while you're on the fly making all this stuff happen. So this is the stat block for, for the burglar. Um, so his name is Dags, but if he lies, because he'll, 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 he'll try to lie, he'll say his name is Henson Helmore, a prominent merchant. So you'll get to try to fool the uh, players with that. Uh, they probably won't believe it. He's got four hit protection. He's got no armor. 
He's got uh, about less than average strength, higher than average dexterity, and average willpower. He's packing a dagger. He's got 25 feet of rope, some lock picks, a crowbar, a uh, coin purse containing 4d6 gold, and some stolen merchandise. So this first scenario here presents a lot of opportunities for how players can handle it. Players might uh, players might not even investigate the sound. So if you, depending on how you distracted them the first time, they might think, "Oh, it's, just, it's another stray animal." Um, they could potentially pass over it entirely, which is which is an honest mistake that that they could make. They could uh, they could encounter the burglar, and the burglar could lie to them, and they could fall for the the lie. Um, although the warden should point out, like, "Oh, he's wearing dark clothing." Um, He's got like a bulky knapsack. Um, might not be on the uh, level. You know, you could communicate that how you want. And then if uh, if the players try to apprehend him, he could try to run. Um, and depending on how dexterity saves go, uh, he might be on the run for a while. The, the, the There could be a really cool high-speed chase. <laughs> and the burglar might end up getting away. The burglar could also be be captured. Well, if the burglar is captured, what 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 will the players decide to do with him? Will they decide to search him and like take his loot? You know, somebody might be able to get a cool dagger. Maybe they can dual wield a sword and a dagger. That could be awesome. Um, maybe someone wants a crowbar so they can bust into stuff. Maybe maybe the player is playing a guard who wants to be a crooked a crooked almost a crooked cop. A corrupted guard who just is out for his own gain might swipe his gold, which they're certainly entitled to. I mean, they might also take the Asola merchandise, which they could try to find their own uh, fence for it in their downtime, or they could return it. Uh, they could try to find the uh, shop it was stolen from and put it back, or they could just simply take it back to the barracks at the end of, at the end of their shift, and you know have. Uh, have the duty officer deal with it and make sure it gets back to whoever it was stolen from. So there's lots of different things that can happen. So I didn't want to sit there and try to itemize and play the uh, a what if game because I think that's against the spirit of role play. So the warden's going to be responsible for, for, for facilitating all this stuff. But regardless of what happens with the uh, burglar, once the burglar encounter is finished, uh, it should be getting dawn soon and then their, their first patrol will be done so this then we'll jump into the first uh, first patrol conclusion so once the shift is ending players will head back to the barracks and see the, and see the duty officer to report anything of note they encountered while on patrol so then you read this to them with the sun now beginning to rise signaling the end of your first patrol you may make you you make your way back to the barracks to report to the officer on duty you walk into the duty office and find a uniform man dozed uh I should put dozing off, not dozed. Dozing off in a chair, seated behind a desk. The man's eyes pop open as your footsteps echo off the walls. He straightens in his chair and reaches for quill and parchment. Must be dawn already. Let's see. You were the market district patrol, yes? Anything to report? And then the players can give their report. You know, if they arrested the uh, burglar, the duty officer will have two other station guards take the uh, uh, burglar away. I should put take the burglar away, not 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 the uh, players. <laughs> if any uh, of the players obtained a scar, so if they got wounded, so if they took some damage to their hip protection during the uh, fight, that's fine. If they got their hip protection reduced to zero, and they also, you know, uh, if they got their hip protection reduced to zero and they received a a scar. Um, the duty officer is going to notice that and advise them to go to the infirmary for healing. Um, and then, you know, once everything's been discussed, the duty officer will pay each player five gold and advise them to get some rest. And then the players are back on downtime. So once they've done their shift, they've made their report. The next few hours are theirs. They can do whatever they want before their next shift. Uh, they can rest, they can heal, they can go to the markets and buy more weapons, armor, supplies, and items with their hard-earned five gold. <laughs> uh, 
uh, they could role play with one another, including pursuing any personal backstories or other errands, tasks the players may have, and then they may rest up, uh, or th they might just choose to just rest up and immediately proceed to the next assignment. If the players that you're playing with aren't really into the whole role playing thing, they just want they just kind of want to get into the next uh, encounter. Uh, they can certainly do that. So then we get into the second patrol, which I will leave for when you play the adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's what I've got so far. Um, kind of a boring thing, just me reading this through. But I think I think it I think it will be a fun adventure. So I'm gonna try this out this weekend with a friend, and uh, I'll see how it goes. And I'll probably make some changes to it. But let me know your thoughts. Is this something that could be fun to play? Is it something that is good for starting players? Uh, do you think it's too railroady? Do you have any suggestions to improve it? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And uh, anyway, let me know your thoughts. And yeah, I look forward to reading comments. And uh, I'll keep working on this. And yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you in whatever video I make next.